Hi, I'm Jen Bernstein. Over the past few months, we've sat down with candidates for this November's election on The Real Story to help you make an informed decision. We're replaying those interviews here on Fox 61 Plus between now and Election Day. We'll have even more interviews, though, with more candidates here on The Real Story. And you can watch Sunday mornings on air on Fox61.com and on Fox 61 Plus. Welcome back to The Real Story. Now to one of the biggest races in Connecticut this year, U.S. Senate, as GOP winner Leora Levy looks to unseat Democrat incumbent Richard Blumenthal. A legacy in Connecticut politics for decades, Blumenthal served as the state's attorney general before his election to the Senate. He also held office in the Connecticut House of Representatives from 1984 to 1987 and the state Senate from 87 to 91. Thanks so much for being with you this, this morning. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks for having me. Of course. So let's take a look back at the primary. Obviously, you weren't on that ballot earlier this month. You didn't have a primary race, but we saw very low turnout for that election. Now, voter turnout is usually low in Connecticut for primaries. It's around 30 percent, but this year turnout just about 16 percent. So how can we increase voter turnout, not just for the primary, but as we look ahead to the general? I am going around the state encouraging people to take an interest in this election because there's a lot at stake, clearly. Women's reproductive rights, the question of whether we can protect women's freedom to make their own health care decisions, fighting climate change and reducing the cost of prescription drugs, and of course gun violence prevention. On all these issues, there is a clear choice, and on others. And I'm encouraging voters to look at the ramifications and the stakes involved in that choice, because clearly it will determine the future of our state and the future of America. The first decision that a Republican senator, newly elected, will make is to vote for Mitch McConnell. If there's a majority, just one more Republican elected, Mitch McConnell will be the majority leader. And he has clearly indicated he's heading in the direction of a national ban on abortion, which my opponent, I believe, favors. You mentioned a lot at stake. What do you think is on Connecticut voters' minds right now? Uh, people have been through a lot of pain, hardship, and heartbreak, and they're still hurting. Prices are too high for groceries bread and milk, but also for gasoline. We've made some inroads. Prices are coming down, but that's very much on people's minds still, and we need to do more. At the same time, I find women are really scared and angry. This Dobbs decision by the United States Supreme Court strips them of the freedom to determine when and whether to have children. The United States Supreme Court and my opponent don't trust women to make that decision. They trust the government intervening and stripping women of that freedom. That is so profoundly on people's minds right now. I hear about it all the time. And they're concerned about student debt, about the question of whether their kids can afford to go to college, about whether they'll advance and whether there'll be jobs for them, skill training, the economy and the uncertainties around it. But I also think people are very concerned about gun violence. And I hear all the time, because every community suffers from it, along with substance abuse disorder, addiction, opioid deaths, and overdoses. I've held roundtables and the other kinds of meetings that elicit their concerns. And, you know, I go all around the state listening to folks, and I think. I know a lot about what is on people's minds, but I encourage them to come forward and tell me. Right. You mentioned those big issues, inflation, the economy, reproductive rights, gun violence. What are you doing the, to combat those issues right now? We just passed the Inflation Reduction Act. I am so proud and excited that after years of work and listening to seniors and others who have to make those tough decisions. They're sitting at their tables deciding, can I pay my rent and buy groceries and afford my medicine? We're going to bring down the cost of prescription drugs. There's going to be a cap on out-of-pocket costs for medicine. And there will be rebates for people if the cost of those medicines rises faster than the cost of inflation and extending the subsidies for people, all of it bringing down 
inflationary costs. And at the same time, that package to fight climate change with credits and rebates, money back in consumer pockets. But I am also working for a windfall profits tax because the big oil companies are making triple and quadruple. Mm -hmm. That's right, qu triple and quadruple what they did last year in comparable quarters. And what my bill would do is put money back in those consumer pockets through rebates quarterly. I think we ought to continue to put more product out there from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, put more pressure on OPEC and those nations to produce more supply. In the short run, the Inflation Reduction Act provides for more drilling. Mm -hmm in the Gulf of Mexico and off the coast of Alaska, but in the long run, we need renewables. And so the Inflation Reduction Act also provides incentives, not mandates, not sticks, but carrots, so that we have more investment, that's the key word, investment, in those sources of energy to bring the cost down. And uh, I'm really proud also quite honestly, of the burn pit legislation. John Tester and I fought for it. We won over years of work, the PAC Act, which will bring down the cost of health care for those veterans. Right. You mentioned the Inflation Reduction Act. I think there's been a lot of discussion around that right now. But what are three things you've been doing the past few months you think voters might not know about? I think a lot of voters still don't know about the PAC Act. And uh, I am making it a mission to go around the state of Connecticut. We did it this week in Rocky Hill. We did it the week before in Hartford with the American Legion to tell veterans they have these payments, the benefits, the disability rights coming to them. If they were exposed to Agent Orange in Thailand and Laos, if they suffer hypertension along with those other conditions, if they were exposed to burn pits in Afghanistan or Iraq or any of the Middle Eastern countries, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, over the course of these 20 years, I have two sons who've served during these years, one as a Navy SEAL, the other as a Marine Corps infantry officer in Afghanistan. The point about these invisible wounds is they often manifest years after a veteran is exposed to these toxic chemicals. So I want veterans and everyone, survivors, family members, to know about this measure. Sweet. I think also the Safer Communities Act okay. to combat gun violence. Right. Uh, Senator Murphy and I, uh, I give tons of credit to Senator Murphy on this issue, but we work together on a package of measures for the first time in three decades, mm -hmm. significant and serious efforts against gun violence. And then the CHIPS Act, which brings back to the United States the supply chain for semiconductors and other critical manufacturing. Let's make it in America. Let's use our factories to make these critical products because that will bring down the cost of goods and services here in the United States as well. If we make it in America, if we have the raw materials here, we can bring down inflation. Absolutely. So let's talk about approval ratings. A recent Quinnipiac poll shows you with your lowest approval rating since you were elected nearly 12 years ago. Those numbers, 45% approve, 43% disapprove of your job performance. Are you concerned at all about seeing those numbers as you look for re-election for a third term? You know, uh, people have heard me say before, I always run like I'm 10 points behind. <laughs> And politicians have an old saying, you know, a poll is just a snapshot. But I always consider myself working like an underdog. And that's just the way I do it. There's another joke about me, which is if there's a garage door opening, Blumenthal will be there. Uh, the pace I keep and have kept literally my entire career in elected office is about listening to people, going to those, those events so I can really listen to people and know what's on their minds. Absolutely. So moving on to your opponent a little bit, Lior Levy is now set as your competitor. We found that out about 
couple weeks ago, who you're going to be running against in November. She continuously calls you a rubber stamp for President Biden. What do you have to say to that? I am my own person, always have been, always will be. I stand up to Big Pharma as we did when we lowered the cost of prescription drugs in the Inflation Reduction Act. I've stood up to big oil in advocating for the windfall profits tax. I've stood up to big tobacco. We won a settlement that has made a difference for people in Connecticut. I've stood up to special interests all of my career in elective office. The people of Connecticut know that I'm fighting for them and that I put them first. And that will be true for as long as I'm in the United States Senate, as long as the people of Connecticut do me the great honor of having me work for them. And they have a choice to make this November, and we're going to be laying out the record. I hope that they will see fit to reelect me. So in that GOP primary, many thought party endorsed Themis Claritus would be the winner there. It ended up being Levy. Do you think she will be an easier candidate to beat? My opponent was Donald Trump's choice. I'm working to be Connecticut's choice. Her views, like Donald Trump's, are way outside the mainstream. But at the end of the day, keep in mind, these choices have so much at stake. My opponent is against a woman's right to make her own health care decisions. She wants to put those decisions in the hands of government. My opponent opposed the Inflation Reduction Act. How could someone be against lowering the cost of prescription drugs? How could someone be against fighting climate change? How could someone be against capping the costs of prescription drugs for Medicare recipients? You brought up Donald Trump, and I have to ask you, do you think he has a lot of influence for Connecticut Republicans? Obviously, it seems his endorsement did a lot for Levy in that primary race. All I can say is Donald Trump still seems to have a lot of influence or impact uh, in the minds of Republican voters, but really I hesitate to draw any judgments. I'm not a Republican primary voter. My opponent clearly supported Donald Trump. He embraced her vigorously before the primary, whether it had an impact and how much impact, whether it was decisive, really is for the pundits to say. And do you think that that Trump's influence there, which, as you mentioned, you're not going to draw any conclusion, you're not a GOP primary voter, but do you think that'll hinder her come the general as he lost here in Connecticut? All I can tell you is uh, my opponent is clearly Donald Trump's choice, and I'm working to be Connecticut's choice. The kinds of views that she has espoused are outside the mainstream. So last question here, looking ahead to November now, what's your elevator pitch for voters who are unaffiliated or independent, those that large block here in Connecticut that, that you need to win over? I'm going to continue to stand up to special interests when they conflict with our interests in Connecticut, whether it's big pharma, big oil, big tobacco, big tech, try to protect children against some of the really destructive content that's driven toward them. I'm really proud of the Kids Online Safety Bill that will offer tools to parents and kids to protect themselves against that destructive content when the algorithms drive it toward them and big tech doesn't care. So I'm going to continue standing up for women who deserve to make their own decisions about health care and reproductive rights. I trust them. And I will continue to work to lower the cost of pharmaceutical drugs and everything else. My opponent is against the Inflation Reduction Act. And I'll continue to work on gun violence because we know in Connecticut we can make a difference on it. Our legislature, to its great credit, and our governor have stood four square in favor of common sense measures for gun safety. That's an example. Those are some examples of what I'm going to continue to do. Perfect. Well, thank you again so much for taking the time to come speak with me here today.
Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right, well, I, like I said, I appreciate you joining us. Um, so next week on The Real Story, we'll be sitting down with, as we said, your uh, opponent, Trump endorsed Leora Levy, who will challenge you on the November ballot. You won't want to miss it. And that does it for us on Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or download the free Fox 61 News app and watch Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here here on Fox 61. Have a great rest of your morning. Welcome back to The Real Story. Now to one of the biggest races in Connecticut this year, U.S. Senate. GOP primary winner Leora Levy calls herself a political outsider. Levy has been a major fundraiser for the GOP, serving on the Finance Committee for the RNC. Back in 2019, former President Donald Trump nominated her as ambassador to Chile, and while she was never confirmed, Trump has now endorsed Levy in this Senate race. After beating party-endorsed Themis Clarity, in the primary. She now seeks to unseat Democrat incumbent Richard Blumenthal in November. Thanks so much for being here with us today, Leora. Thank you very much for inviting me. Of course. So let's take a look back at that primary I just mentioned. You beat them as Claritas, some calling that an upset as she was the party endorsed favorite. Now you've never held political office before like your uh, opponent in November, Richard Blumenthal. But what made you run and what makes you so confident you can win? in November? Well, I'm running because I've never been so worried about our country. Joe Biden, supported and assisted by Dick Blumenthal, are destroying the opportunity for the American dream, for Connecticut families and for their children. I decided I could no longer stand by and let things just happen. I had to jump in to, ch to make change and to fight for Connecticut families. And with that primary that I mentioned, there was very low turnout for that election. Now, primary turnout's typically low here in Connecticut, about 30%, but this year turnout just approximately 16% total. And in your party, just about one in five Republicans turned out to vote. So how can we increase voter engagement, not just in primaries, but looking ahead to the general. Well, it's very important for people to vote. That is the way they can express themselves. That is how they decide who their leaders will be and what the policies will be going forward. So I encourage everyone of any party, unaffiliated, independents, Democrats, Republicans, please vote. Are there it any concrete ways we can get people out to vote? Well, I, 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 I can't explain, I, I can't really think of that. I, for me, it's always been a privilege to vote. There are so many countries, like the country in which I was born, Cuba, which is a communist country where their vote is meaningless because it's rigged. So it's very important for people to vote. We have that privilege, we have that responsibility as Americans to vote. So I do encourage everyone who's eligible to vote. What do you think are the top issues on voters' minds heading to the polls this November? Well, the number one issue is the economy. Life is unaffordable here in Connecticut, and that is the direct result of the failed economic policies of Joe Biden, rubber stamped by my opponent, Dick Blumenthal. And that includes the high gas prices, the high food prices. Food prices in July were up 13.1%, but if you look at individual items, eggs were up 32%. Everything is much more expensive. Parents have to make hard decisions. Do I fill my tank with four to five dollar gasoline, a gallon gasoline, or do I feed my family? And now school is starting. They've had to buy school supplies. You know, we live in the Northeast. There is a shortage of home heating oil. It's at the lowest level in, in nearly a decade. I'm very worried about people not being able to afford to heat their homes. 
So we, we have to stop what's happening and reverse it. How would you combat those issues like you mentioned inflation? Well, inflation is a direct result of the, the trillions of dollars of, of unnecessary, wasteful spending by the Biden administration started with last year with, with the, the $1.9 trillion, followed by $800 billion, followed by the $750 billion of the recent, what is it called? They, they call it the Inflation Reduction Act, mm -hmm. but it does anything but reduce inflation. You don't think that's going to help bring down costs for it, United it will, families? It will worsen inflation. It will. It creates much more spending. It increases taxes on the middle class. What are they doing? Life is more is expensive enough, and they will be taxing the middle class. What what people don't realize is besides their federal income tax going up, it will increase the tax the Connecticut income taxes because they're tied. Mm -hmm. So Blumenthal voted to increase your taxes all around. That that is very difficult in the middle of a recession. So another major issue on voters' minds nationwide, abortion access. You've said many times that you are pro-life. And if you win in November, would you support a federal abortion ban? Look, I am personally pro-life. The laws in Connecticut are enshrined, are, are in the Connecticut Constitution. There's nothing I would do on the federal level. And um, frankly, I'm concerned about the children people have and whether they can feed them and whether they can clothe them and whether those children have the opportunity to live an American dream the way I have. That's my concern. That's what I'm going to Washington to fight for. So you believe Connecticut's laws and stance on abortion, you wouldn't be in interest of changing those? I'm going to be a senator in the United States Senate in Washington. I will have nothing to do with the laws in Connecticut. Okay. And you wouldn't change it on the federal level either? I'm not even going to comment about a bill that hasn't been written, hasn't been proposed. That's just pure specula speculation. So some say your endorsement by former President Donald Trump pushed you over that finish line in this primary election. How influential do you think his stamp of approval was for your win in that race? Well, I'm very grateful for his endorsement. I've received endorsements from senators and leaders from both ends of, of the spectrum of the Republican Party, including Rob Portman, including Tom Tillis, and including Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar, including Ambassador Rick Grinnell. So I've received quite a, quite a few endorsements, and I believe in a big tent. That's the way I've always approached our party, and I follow Ronald Reagan's uh, um, prescription that my 80% friend is not my 20% enemy. There are issues on which we may disagree, but I, I am Leora Levy. It's Leora Levy's name who's on the ballot, and, and that's the way I'm running. You mentioned a big tent for your party. On the flip side, a lot of Republicans have been distancing themselves from Trump recently, especially in a state like Connecticut, where he lost the 2020 presidential election here. Are you worried this might make voters from your own party look to your opponent come November? Look, the president whose name is on the ballot is Joe Biden. His policies are on the ballot, and my opponent has voted 98.1 percent with Joe Biden to, to implement those policies, and those are the policies that are making life unaffordable for Connecticut families, have increased the crime as they defunded the police, which he supported, have, have made our state a border state with an invasion at our border because they're flying illegals to Westchester County Airport and Tweed Airport. Those are the policies that are on the ballot. And that's a, and Joe Biden is a president whose name is associated with those policies. So you don't think your direct endorsement from Trump puts his name on the ballot also? No, it's Leora Levy on the ballot. Absolutely. So speaking of some of those voters, Connecticut has a large block of independent and unaffiliated voters here in Connecticut. So obviously you won the Republican primary where only those registered voters can, can vote, but now in the general November everyone can vote. So how are you going to win over those independent and unaffiliated voters? Well, I am assembling a coalition of voters from the, in fact, the Republican Party, Democrat Party, independents and unaffiliated 
affiliated. I travel our state every day. I'm in a different part of the state, and people come up to me and say, I'm an unaffiliated. I tried to vote for you in the primary, and I, I couldn't register the day of the election, but I am voting for you in November. I Yesterday, I was in prospect at the car show, and I had a gentleman say, I'm a Democrat, but I'm going to vote for you. I like what you're saying, because everybody goes to the gas station. Everybody goes to the supermarket and, and has to make those tough decisions. Everybody feels unsafe in their own homes and in their communities. Everybody understands that things must change. We cannot elect the same people and expect a different outcome. If you want change, what would you do? What would be concrete policies to reduce inflation? Well, the first thing is to stop the spending. That's the first thing you do. We also would have to reverse some of the, the provisions of the in, what they call the Infa Inflation Reduction Act. I call it the Mansion Cinema Build Inflation Back Better Act, so, such as not fund the bank for the EPA, not fund the slush fund for the energy department that will turn into another Solinda, Solindra fiasco, not fund the 87,000 IRS agents some of them armed, who are going to be there to infringe on Americans' privacy and constitutional rights, to go after Americans who are earning up to 75, uh, from $75,000 and small businesses. Think about it. Uh, UConn Stadium holds 40,000 people. They just are proposed to hire 87,000 new IRS agents. That's well, a lot of agents, and I'm not sure why they need to be armed. Well, there's been a shortage of you know, IRS agents. You don't think we need more? 87,000 of them? Think about it, Emma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you don't think people aren't getting their refunds? You don't think we need to send They aren't there to for, refu section? for the purpose of refunds. They are there to root out what they consider Americans not paying their taxes. And Americans, you know, look, there are always people in any circumstance who may not have good intentions, but for the most part, Americans are fair and good people, and they, they do pay their taxes. This, these IRS agents are there to intimidate and, and create um, people, people uh, create, uh, put people in a situation where they have to just admit to things that they may not have done just to get them off their backs. When it comes to climate change, would you support any measures on the federal level to help reduce what's happening well, you know, right now? Well, you know, one thing I can tell you about this bill, according to Bjorn Lomberg, who used the UN climate change model, this bill will only reduce climate change it was about nine one thousandths of a, of a degree of Fahrenheit in temperature at the best. That is virtually nothing. This will have no effect on climate change. It will have a reverse effect on, on inflation. It will not do anything that, that the Democrats have promised. It is, it is a smoke and mirrors. It is gaslighting the American people. But do you think we need other climate change policies? Obviously, we've had severe droughts here in Connecticut, and that's impacting farmers, other sort of extreme weather. Do you think that could be a concern for, for voters or Connecticut people in the state who are in agriculture? Agriculture, who are seeing those effects from that severe weather right now? Of course, of course, and we we need to develop alternatives as much as possible, but we can't do it in instead of what the energy products, the energy sources we have, because they're not at that point where they can 100% replace it yet. We cannot stop our economy cold. But do you think it's helping to take money away from the EPA? This is money that they've, that, that, it's a bank. They created a bank in the EPA. Do you think there's anybody in the EPA that knows anything about banking? This is, this is so much money and with no strings attached, no, no way of verifying what it will be used for. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is basically another slush fund and it will end badly for the American people. These are hardworking Americans' tax dollars that will be squandered with no verification. So our last question here, you talk 
a lot about your background, how your family fled Cuba. You were a refugee here in the United States. So how do you think Connecticut can fit into current foreign policy discussions at the national level? Well, Connecticut, we we have a great product manufacturing base. We we are very we have a great defense industry. We we have a great brain trust here with the universities and the scientific developments and, and pharmaceutical companies. So we are very right we are positioned very well to do a lot of foreign trade and and so that's how I would see Connecticut fitting into the foreign policy discussion. Perfect. Well, thank you again so much for taking the time to be with us here today, Leora. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for inviting me. Absolutely. And uh, looking ahead, we had Richard Blumenthal, your opponent, here last week on The Real Story. We sat down with him to talk about this race. You can find that episode and all of our past Real Story content and conversations on Fox 61 Plus, on Roku, and Amazon Fire Stick. Now, that does it for us this morning on The Real Story, your place to hear directly from the people on your ballot and about the issues that matter to you ahead of the November election. If you want to watch these segments again, head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 app and watch the real story here every Sunday at 10 a.m. Have a great rest of your morning. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, you can find more candidate interviews here on Fox 61 Plus. Join us election night for full coverage of all the state races.